Good morning, chess fans. So today I want to talk a little bit about in-game theory. Um, and specifically, I posted a question and demonstration from an actual in-game that I played in a couple of days ago to the uh, in-game forum over on uh, chess.com and uh, got a lot of really thoughtful responses, some awesome responses, and so I thought I would create a YouTube video to demonstrate some of the uh, in-game theory at work in this actual blitz game that I played against a uh, player, an opponent ranked 207 points higher than me. So some uh, principal chess theory that's at work in this particular in-game, um, things like when one pawn blocks two. So if you look at these two pawns here, uh, in this scenario that I set up, um, white is to move, so it's white's turn to move. And you can see in, in this case, you have one white pawn over here blocking two black pawns. Uh, so uh, that's part of the in-game theory is when, when one pawn blocks two. Also, definitely in, in this in-game, uh, as in many in-games involving pawns and kings, uh, gaining the opposition is, is central here. So I'll talk a little bit about that. Um, the uh, fox in the chicken coop is another... Uh, 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 in-game theory, um, you know, mechanism at play here, as well as trebuchet, queening squares, uh, and non-rook pawn endings. Uh, so just a, it was really a rich, robust um, in-game with a lot of um, chess theory at work. And so I decided to post the actual uh, game up in the uh, discussion forum. Um, and my main question, as you can see, was, okay, this looks like an obvious win for white. For anybody ranked 1,500 and higher, um, unless you blunder, white has got this game won and locked up, if you study the position just for a moment. So my question was, uh, for players that are ranked better than me, um, I asked them, um, is there any way that black could force a draw in this scenario. Is there any way that black could use these connected pawns uh, over on the uh, on the H file and the G file to to create a, a draw situation or perhaps even a win? Um, and it's fascinating to see some of the responses which I'll go through here. Um, if you play it correctly, well, white wins this every time. But one particular person posted in here uh, an example of, well, why don't you just do this? And in his scenario, someone else came back and showed um, that the um, that the end game that, that he was proposing or, or plan that he was proposing actually led to a black win. So you can really screw up this position pretty pretty easily. Uh, for players ranked 1,500 and higher, this is a pretty straightforward ending. Um, at any rate, so this is from the actual game. So if you look at the position, you notice there's uh, a white king and an isolated... Uh, you know, pass pawn out in the middle of the board. And this is really the strength of this game. This is where white's going to win, is with this king and the pawn in the middle of the board uh, up on the fourth row, right? Uh, over here, though, black has some, has some you know, some, something for white to be aware of uh, and have to consider as he's advancing his king and his pawn uh, because these connected pawns can work together to pass... Um, this pawn over on the G file. So, so what's your first move here? The first thing you want to do is try and gain the opposition. So gaining the opposition means placing your king with one square between you and the opposing king. And this forces black in this situation to move away from, the, uh, from having the opposition, which is exactly what black does. So black moves over to the F file. So in this situation, and now this is the actual uh, uh, scenario that I played, and then I asked players who are better than me, experts, uh, to, to review this position and suggest a better play. So then I fo followed suit by moving over to um, F5 in this case. Um, and my idea here is, is to get the king over here so he's close to these pawns, right? And then advance the pawn up the center on the E file, pushing the black king back, and then swing in once the black king is back a couple of squares 
to take these two pawns over here, which is known as fox in the chicken coop. And it's called fox in the chicken coop because you advance a pawn in such a way that the king, the opposing king, has to move back. And then once he's out of range, um, the white king acts as the fox in the chicken coop and cleans up all the, uh, uh, the remaining pawns or hens in this uh, allegory. Um, so let's see how this plays out. So black decided to move uh, to, um, to g7 in this case. So I just move forward with the pawn. Black moves back to try and block the advancing pawn that's going to try to promote up on the 8th uh, uh, rank. So that's checked. Black moves his king over. Now this is the defining move uh, of, of the game. Um, in the actual game that I play, I move, as you can see, to g6 to go ahead and try and take these two black pawns. And then I'm going to advance this pawn. So I'm going to sacrifice the, the white pawn on e6 in order to take the two remaining black pawns because black's king cannot uh, defend it at this point. However, uh, one of the uh, expert pro players ranked over 2,000 uh, shows later there's a simpler way to win this game than, than what I actually did, which I'll go through in a moment. But this is how I actually played it. So uh, black moves to block the advancing pawn. So I move over to g6. All right, and again, the expert player said that that was a mistake, although I ended up winning the game. So in this particular scenario, it worked. Black takes the pawn. Right. So here's the fox in the chicken coop scenario. So I'm able to take this pawn. Now the problem is black can then move back over here. But the beauty of this particular in-game position is that it then creates a trebuchet uh, scenario where white can move here, but black can no longer move his king to any square that protects his pawn. Because if he moves, if he tried to move to um, the f5 square, um, that would move him into check. So he can't move to the f5 square. He can't move here because that would move him into check. And so he's forced to move away from the pawn, which allows me, the white king, to then um, take the pawn. Right? And I gain opposition yet again in this scenario. So this is a pretty straightforward ending for, for most players rank, let's say, 1300 and up at this point. Uh, because this is a non-rook pawn, it's not on the uh, rook file. Uh, this should be a pretty straightforward win for white in this scenario. So I move forward, gaining the opposition. Black has to move left or right, depending on which way black moves. If he moves left, then the king needs to move right to the queening square. And by queening square, what I mean is this is the square that protects the 8th rank so that the pawn can advance and promote. If black moves to, let's say, the h8 square, white would need to move to f7, which would be the queening square on that side. Again, so that the king is protecting the square where the pawn hopes to promote. Right? Um, but in this particular game, a black move to, to f8. Like, I mean, again, it's, it's worth really emphasizing. If he moves to h8, I would simply move to this square. If he moves to f8, I move to h7. And that's the queening square. So again, a lot of really rich chess in-game theory at work here. So he moves back, and it's just too little too late at this point. Uh, it might look like maybe black can do something if you're not an expert player, but uh, there's nothing he can do. I can just walk the pawn down at this point and promote it to a queen, uh, and then it's a, a basic uh, king and queen um, mating scenario. Uh, there's an interesting uh, uh, demonstration that another player pointed out, um, Green Castle Block, whose rank, as you can see, in online chess anyways, uh, is 2100. So this is somebody uh, who plays really, really well, much better than me. Um, so he set up a demonstration with the same exact end game and said, okay, you had a simpler win here. Um, 
Yes. The simple, I guess, is, is relative. Um, at any rate, let's play through his scenario. So what he says to do is, is start the same way I did. So gaining the opposition, keeping the opposition. Now the difference is he suggests walking the pawn a step further by instead of moving to the g6 square, which is what I actually did in the game, moving to the e5 square, forcing the black king back yet another square. Then move here with the king, move the pawn, check, and then in this situation black is now forced, if I move my king here, to advance his pawns. All right? So I don't know if you saw that, but as the white king moved to e6, um, the king, the black king can no longer move. Any move that he would make would put him in check, so he's essentially pinned and cannot move. So he's forced to move his uh, h6 pawn forward, which then enables white to capture on h5. And this is a beautiful line because it's so tight. So now I'm advancing my white pawn to hope to promote, and black's advancing his pawn to hope to promote. For, unfortunately for black, um, or fortunately for white, depending on your perspective, um, white is one square ahead in the scenario, and so can uh, force checkmate with a pawn promotion to either a rook or a queen. Um, and at this point, that's checkmate. Now in the actual game, I should emphasize I was playing a blitz game and I was unfamiliar with this position. Uh, and so I played it uh, as a fox in the chicken coop scenario where I advanced the pawn and then swung the king over and took the two pawns. Um, however, Greencastle Block points out a, a simpler win um, that ensures victory. Uh, and so, so a little bit of chess in-game theory there. Again, to recap uh, some of the uh, points to, to sort of study or learn if, you, if you're not familiar with these is when one pawn blocks two. So that's a scenario that you have here in the setup where you have one pawn that's essentially blocking two pawns. Really effective placement of, of, the, uh, of the white pawn. Also gaining the opposition. That's when the king steps in front of the opposing king uh, with one square between them and it forces the opposing king away. That's called gaining the opposition. Then fox in the chicken coop is a scenario where the king sacrifices a distant pawn in order to be able to capture the remaining opposing pawns. And then trebuchet uh, is a French term um, uh, for this scenario where uh, the opposing king cannot move to uh, defend uh, opposing pawns squares because it would move them into check. Again, gaining the opposition. So that's a little bit of a recap. Um, also, I guess I should point out the queening square uh, as well. The queening squares are on the uh, seventh uh, rank. So once you get your king to the seventh rank, if you have an adjoining pawn, that is the queening square because it can protect the square with which the pawn hopes to uh, promote. I hope you've enjoyed this chess demonstration of in-game theory. Please like and subscribe. See you guys later.